listening and welcome to another episode of Water Assassin Fishing. For those of you who haven't joined this channel before, my name is Dave. And for those of you who haven't joined the channel before, I fish a lot in the St George's Basin. And today, I am ultra finesse for flathead in a Hobie kayak. First bloody for the day. So I've got a 1 to 12 ounce jig head on. I am targeting flathead, so a bit of a heavier jig head than I would normally run for brim and whiting and that sort of stuff. Um, I've got a bait junkie minnow, and I've got that in the, I think it's called the sand or bloodworm color. I can't actually remember, but it's sort of like a motor oily, sandy color. So those interested at home, I'm gonna release him back to his habitat as he gives me one last little goodbye with a flick to the finger. For those who haven't joined my channel before, I get hit a lot by flathead. So, first bleed for the day. Um, cracking morning, actually. <laughs> really doing my best to avoid the boat traffic that we'll be picking up during this holiday season. Um, it's George's Basin, for those who haven't been here before, it, it gets actually hammered over the holiday period and can make fishing quite difficult and that's why today I've got five meters of two pound leader <laughs> the viz is actually not bad so I'm trying to give myself all the advantages I can I'm also using a s-factor squidgy s-factor scent on my little soft plastic just again every advantage is needed because these fish have seen a lot of a lot of presentations over the last probably month and essentially what I'm doing as you can see casting it out a couple little flicks of the rod tip just trying to get that lure to jump up and down on the bottom giving it letting it sit for a while not being too aggressive with its lie especially this early in the morning until these flathead are sort of woken up for the day and when I feel that pressure or I see that line go a little bit tighter my strike isn't your normal strike that you do for a fish and I'll tell you why if you're striking a fish with two pound leader all you're going to be doing is snapping that line straight like it'll it's as thin as your hair so what I'm trying to do is absorb pressure using the rod and letting this fish hook itself and then it'll run with the with the line and hopefully get hooked now a couple of things as I was very busy trying to get away from everyone this morning um, sort of going along here on the edge and came across a little prawn net this one just here so if you're a local or someone and you've lost your little prawn net let me know because I've got it it was sitting on the bottom of the water and it's being red you can see that color from a mile away Another fish guys on the old Kai Tech. This little flathead up in here in the creek. Just had to escape for a little bit due to the inclement and very um, very reliable wind that picked up. So another little another little flathead. Just got that on the top of the lip and just got another hit to the finger. Get a few of those, eh? Get him upside down. That should keep him quiet for a couple of seconds while I remove him from his predicament. This is what the Kai Tech looks like. It's a um, yeah, nice looking lure. You can see it's actually missing one of its little little paddles. That when it goes down in the water, it'll drop like that, and that paddle will spin. And yeah, tracks fish on the on the trawl too, which is great. So. Um, one of my favourite lures to actually use up here in the in the creeks around St George's Basin. It's a um, great little lure. So yeah, as as previously just mentioned there before, I've just escaped the escaped the wind for a few moments, hoping it sort of backs off a little bit, and then um, yeah, I'll head out and probably do a little bit of a draw a little bit later. But exciting episode for you guys today. Um, I am going to do a bit of a um, catch and cook. So went out the other day and got some squid, and I'm going to make a nice 
this little dish up here in the creek for lunch, which would be good. Hoping I can get a couple of fish too before we get to that point. But look, regardless, where else would you rather be? So I've got a wind sitting there at my back at the moment, pushing me up through the creek. And it's casting underneath this structure here, underneath these trees. It's targeting floodheads, so. Have fun. Whoa. So guys, I've changed to a surface lure. Oh, and missed a heap of content because my SD card did something that God knows what. And I've just got a cicada on this. And I've just cast it in to those trees over there. And this is a great fish. Just those branches over there is where it hit. It's a couple of seconds later, off the top, bang. And I think I've got a brim on here. It's a very hot day, so I'm in survival mode at the moment. Oh, that's a great fish. I'm gonna give that a little bit more drag, I think. It's important to get it out of those snags whenever you're fighting a fish like this on light, light leader. Yeah, it's a brim. Nice big black brim that would have been sitting underneath that a tree. Just hammered this cicada off the surface. It's a good fish. Oh, how fun is this? Hatching, hatching brim up under snags. Well, it wasn't really up under snags, was it? It was on the surface when it hit. Bang, that's a, that is a big brim. What's called a black fin brim. Uh, obviously you can tell it compared to a yellow fin brim due to the dark coloration on the fins rather than that yellow color that we always see um, in the yellow fin version. So I'm just gonna put this guy back in the water. This is an old fish. Love surface fishing. It's hard to beat it. Here is uh, Phil Laurie would say, guys, I've just got my double clutch out. Um, and I've been trawling. Something's hit this pretty hard actually. I've got this other rod out here, so decision time. You can see that's swimming on top there. Well, basically, it looks like I've, I've foul hooked this flathead. <laughs> Little flathead. Poor thing. Eight pound leader on this particular setup, so no fear of. Whoa, and that is how you lose a finger or you get a hook stuck in it. It's gonna require some pliers. Oh, getting very hot up in here now, guys. Str starting to struggle a bit. Probably go a little bit further, do a bit more on surface, and then I'll make my way back for a um, bit of lunch somewhere a bit of lunch. It's um, probably caught about 15 flathead today and unfortunately as mentioned previously my SD card um, it's come up with an error on my on my thing somehow so I, I actually don't know what's going on. We'll see if I can get someone smart who can help me figure out what's going wrong with the, or see if I can get any content um, from those fish but I've just been basically using that soft plastic um, that you guys saw me use all morning and, and that was working really well. So I moved up into the creek just purely due to the boat traffic this time of year and also because of that wind. Um, and yeah, that's where we are. This has done a couple of loops. Put himself in a real tiz there. Nice little flathead. See if I can kiss this like old Rexy. Back you go. Oh. Right. Let's see what else we can get. Finally. Trawling. The vibe.
Good fish. Heavy fish. Swimming that way. Straight under the boat now. to fight it over here. Ugh. I haven't uh, had a look at it yet guys but it's heavy. There we go, it's a big flathead. There's a trevally there. Oh, it's a good fish. It's not massive guys so I can sort of hold it up by its mouth. Uh, it's probably a 50s model, but have a look at that. It's absolutely smashed that, that hide. It's hit it that hard that it's taken the whole thing in its mouth. It's got trebles everywhere. I think I've actually gut hooked that fish. And it's a good size of eating fish. Um, as that one was coming up fighting, there was a couple of trevally actually as well. But it's yeah, I've gut hooked it with that treble, so that front trebles. <sighs> Don't want to let it go to waste. Obviously, I can't leave this particular hook in its gut. Be cruel, be a slow fate. So I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to try and find somewhere cool that I can keep it. Um, yeah. Oh. Right, there, folks. Gotta cook some lunch. Swim though, it's really hot. Oh, atrocity that is boat traffic here at the moment. I decided to come up off the water a little bit, cook my um, my lunch. This is one of the few little camp spots that I've frequented over the last couple of years um, in this particular area. And behind me here is a little, a little hand-built shack. Um, the reason I bring that up is because behind you, and I'm going to show you guys this in a second, is a tree. Now... About two years ago, I was camping here with five PSI and actually one of his good mates. And I was in the hammock and I was actually tied to this particular tree. And everything was fine, had a, I think two nights here, um, just 30 or 40 mils of rain in like an hour, it was insane though. Um, anyway, came back here the week after, I think I got stuck out here somewhere and I was going to stay the night um, just shoot you to where I was and like trying to get back was going to be difficult. So I came to this campsite again and the tree had fallen over. Now if I had been still tied to that tree, um, potentially would have killed me to be fair. It's, you know, one of those things you've got to be careful of, hammocks or tents or whatever you're in. Um, you've just got to look at the trees that are around you and these trees don't have very deep roots. so. There's a lot of rain, um, a lot of wind, just, yeah, probably do yourself a favour and don't camp under a tree. Anyway, on to today's food. So, we are going to keep it very simple. Um, today I'm going to use the jet boil for the first time, so the actual boiling component of it, um, as I will cook a, a noodle dish. It's basically a... Um, a noodle honey soy squid recipe that I sort of came across online and to be fair I have eaten a lot of squid in my career 
or calamari due to the nature of you know living on the coast and being somewhat decent at catching seafood so what I'm trying to say is I'm trialing a new recipe that I haven't done before because I feel like I've had that many squid sort of meals over the years I've got to try something a little bit different so what I'm gonna do is I've got my squid tentacles in here they've been marinating in a honey soy um, honey soy marinade that I've had going for the last roughly 12 hours or oh, probably more like 16 hours actually so they're gonna be nice and full of honey soy now what I'm gonna do first though is I clean up my atrocity that is the campsite here is I'm just gonna get everything set up because when I cook the noodles I'm not gonna have a lot of time between that and the next step so filling this full of water a lot full of water I'm just gonna put a bit of water in it it's a very hot day I don't want to use all my all my water just for for this meal get a bit of a drink start the gas that up now this is supposedly meant to boil very quickly also got these these are hokkien noodles so really simple what i've got to do is soak these in boiling water for two to three minutes sort of heating them up hence the reason i'm boiling these first i was planning on doing two lots of noodles but i've got to be careful because i've actually gone through about three liters of a 3.8 liter jug of water already today these ants are going to swarm me in a sec too. Can be, well, I might just put that in first. Noodles in first. At least, at least they're going. Oh, I might be able to get two lots of noodles in actually. So the next part guys is the squid. So I'm just going to put a bit of oil in here in this pan. Um, the marinade that I'm using is homemade. It is a honey soy that I made using honey so it was two two teaspoons of honey and two splashes of soy sauce with a bit of garlic and salt and pepper Away. And I'm just gonna whack this in which is my squid so you guys can see that they're marinating overnight it's getting pretty hot there so I'm just gonna add in this squid And then I've just got a bit of salt and pepper that I put in that plastic bag too that I'll tip in there. I'll show you guys what's going on over here. Come with me. <laughs> there we go. So we've got the squid here, obviously simmering in the pan over here we've just got the noodles that are just sort of heating up or soaking in that hot water that is no longer boiling so i'll show you this first but today i'm going to be putting the noodles in here but this is honey soy squid look how good that looks i'm nearly trying to taste that without the noodles but i've got to do the, the full thing oh look dangerously fall backwards now this could end badly what i'm going to do I'm going to use the jet boil for its intended purpose and that is to filter some of this water. So I'm going to filter the water out using that spout. The noodles are going to stay in the in there so sort of straining it I guess you'd call it. And so now I should be able to just tip these noodles straight in. Beautiful. Just like so. Oh, how good does this look guys? Aesthetically didn't think that through very well throwing the noodles straight on top of that squid But here's a bit of a sort of sneak peek at how that squid looks and I'll tell you what it looks phenomenal It tastes even better Now 
Oh man, that tastes good. Man, I'm gonna have to get back out and do another squid session maybe today. That was so good. Hardest thing at the moment, as I have talked about, um, and you guys have probably watched videos, if you're new to the channel, obviously watch them, but if you're one of my older viewers, you probably see that I get up to a fair bit um, when it comes to fishing. I don't really specialise in any particular area. Shooting food, to show before, is it's very difficult to always go out and do exactly what you want to do in St George's Basin and Jervis Bay. Because of a lot of different factors similar to you know where you might live already um, at home, you know you might have different factors that limit what you can do. Here you've got the wind, you've got the tourists, you've got obviously the storms that blow through. Um, so you can't always just go out and go, oh yeah, tomorrow I'll go and do this. You're sort of limited to what you can get out there and do based on those factors. At the moment it's a tourist. For, for massive for us in our economy. Um, not the best though when it comes to rubbish and things being left around. But again, I'm stereotyping and generalizing based on, you know, a few very annoying people. Um, not everyone's like that. In fact, most people that come down here, are, you know, great. Um, and, you know, if we can leave everything the way we found it, world would be a much better place but what I'm talking about is squidding now you guys watched an episode last week might have been the week before depending on when I got that content up um, where I went out and caught squid now me and 5 psi only had about four hours to get in and out of the water before everyone got there and it was too busy um, we pretty much got pushed off the water it was that bad out there so if you are coming to Jervis Bay don't come here with one thing in mind to go, oh, I'll go out and go squidding or I'll go chase flathead only or whatever. Come here with a few different options. Have some squid jigs, have some soft plastics, some deep divers, some um, vibes, you know. Have some gear ready to walk the creek if you need to, the flats if you have to. And that way when you come here, you're not going to have these unreal expectations on when, what you can or should do when you get here. Look at the winds. Suss out spots on Google. That's how I learned. I've only been here five years and I didn't have anyone to teach me any of these things um, from, I'm from the bush. So I had to learn all these things myself. And, you know, fortunately there were people on YouTube like myself, but very much better at what they do than me. That sort of taught me a lot about how to catch fish and that sort of thing. Very mind assisted by plenty of great people, including the great Adam Dodd and many other people who have helped me on that journey. This tastes so good. So guys, as I sit here and enjoy the rest of this, I'm not going to make you watch me do it. Wind's picking up a fair bit as you guys can hear. I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who watches these videos. Um, really appreciate it. When this video comes out, I'm going to go past 400 subscribers. So, again, there's not a lot of people out there realise how, um, yeah, that, that's a big deal for me because I didn't think 400 people would want to watch me come out on these kind of things. But anyway, just a massive thank you to you guys. Also, if you're new to this uh, channel, would really appreciate it if you wouldn't mind subscribing. Um, as always, guys, I'll see you on the next adventure.